the Transit of Mercury 2019. Welcome to Stargazers. I'm James Albury, director of the Kika Silva Pla Planetarium in Gainesville, Florida. And I'm Dean Regis, astronomer for the Cincinnati Observatory. We're here to help you find your way around the sky. The last great astronomical event of 2019 is happening next week, and we've been waiting three years to see it. It's not a planetary conjunction, and it's not a lunar or a solar eclipse. But it is something so rare that it only occurs 13 times every century. The tiny planet Mercury will go directly between us and the Sun. You'll be able to see Mercury completely silhouetted by the fusion -y furnace that is our Sun. It's called a transit of Mercury, and we'll get you ready to view this rare event safely on November 11th. Let's show you. Okay, the date is Monday, November 11th, and it's just before sunrise. If we're going to see Mercury pass in front of the sun, that means we have to look during the daytime. So we'll go through several hours of that day to see what happens. First, let's appreciate the sunrise. The sun will rise in the southeast, move up and to the right, cut slowly and surely across the southern sky, and then set in the southwest. Hmm. Did you notice anything? I sure didn't. I thought this transit of Mercury was some awesome event. I didn't see anything out of the ordinary. That's because a transit of Mercury is a subtle alignment that takes a skillful, savvy observer to witness, and one needs access to some extra equipment. Remember, Mercury is very small and staring at the sun too long will blind you. First, you'll need a safe solar filter, one that is approved by astronomers to look at the sun. Do not use sunglasses, foil, CDs, film negatives, mylar, x-rays, or any homemade filter. They will not protect you. Solar eclipse glasses and number 14 welder's glass can protect you from the sun, but you'll need more than that to see Mercury that day. You'll need magnification. Mercury is so small compared to the sun that you will not be able to see it with the naked eye. That means you'll need to put safe filters on your binoculars and telescopes to see it. Proper filters go in front of the lenses or mirrors and block out the light before it enters the telescope. Once you're properly outfitted, here's what the sun will look like with a zoomed in view. You'll first see Mercury at around 7.36 a.m. Eastern Standard Time as a little black spot growing along the edge of the sun. By 7.38, Mercury will appear completely inside the sun's disk. To paraphrase a certain song, there'll be a little black spot on the sun that day. Indeed. Then you can watch Mercury slowly continue in its orbit around the sun and seem to pass through it minute by minute, hour by hour. At 10.30 a.m., it'll be about halfway through. Then at 1.02 p.m., Mercury starts heading off the sun, and two minutes later, Mercury is invisible once more. So a transit of Mercury can last more than five hours with the most exciting parts at the beginning and the end. If you don't have a safe solar filter and a telescope, contact your local astronomy club or planetarium. Chances are they'll be welcoming guests to view this rare event. Astronomers, whether amateur or professional, love sharing the heavens with others. So see if your community is planning a transit of Mercury party on November 11th. Finally, notice that the transit lasts from 7.36 a.m. to 1.02 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please adjust your time accordingly. That means the people on the West Coast will not see the beginning of the transit because the sun will not have risen yet. But fear not, you'll still see hours of it before Mercury departs the sun's disk. Stargazers on the East Coast will see the entire thing. You know what, James? I've waited three years to see this transit. Me too. And if you miss this one, the next transit of Mercury won't be until November 13th, 2032, and the next one visible from the United States won't be until May 7th, 2049. Wow. In other words, on November 11th, make sure you keep looking, looking up.